In today's video, we are covering two essential skills for diving in California, or really anywhere with waves or kelp. Vamanos. <laughs> Is it time to get up? Welcome to our channel, The Soul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and today we're going over two super simple skills that will save you a lot of headaches before hitting the beaches. Before we get into that, I want to give a big shout out to Eco Roots. They are the sponsor of this video today. Stick through to the end of the video to learn more about their new amazing products. Safety announcement. As always, make sure you dive with a buddy and choose dive sites and conditions within your experience range. And a really important golden rule to know in scuba diving is that anyone at any time can cancel the dive for whatever reason. There is no ridiculing, there's no questioning, there's no convincing. If somebody decides to cancel a dive, that's it. Safety is always number one priority. The two skills that I'm going to teach in this video are super common here in California. Instructors tend to teach them in the open water course because they're essential for certain dive sites with complicated entries and with kelp. I didn't learn these straight away because I learned in tropical water. So I wanted to make this video just for those of you that did not get that one-on-one -on -one instruction. It's going to save you a lot of um, just like annoyance <laughs> at the surface, but also one of them is really important for safety. I had no idea coming to California and scuba diving, there was going to be so much crawling involved, <laughs> but both of these skills involve crawling and diving here in California really isn't about looking cool or looking particularly graceful either. Our first skill is the kelp crawl. This one is a little bit counterintuitive, but it'll save you a lot of time and frustration at the surface. We all know the best way to swim at the surface in full scuba gear is actually by turning around and swimming backwards. That's why this particular skill is counterintuitive. If you're swimming backwards through kelp, your tank is going to just carry the kelp forest with you. You are going to get majorly entangled and for the most part that would just cause, you know, frustration and you need help from your buddy. But it could also lead to panic, especially with new divers. When you get stuck in something, you can get kind of caught up in your head about it and start turning too much and it just makes the problem worse. And so it is actually a safety thing as well. <laughs> you guys know the drill by now. If you're new here, what? Abby, don't fall. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our content. How could you? You can't miss this face. You have to subscribe, right? Right, baby? <laughs> She's so precious. That being said, the way that you do the kelp crawl is by having your mask on, regulator in, or snorkel if you're into that kind of thing and you turn over and you literally do sort of like a doggy paddle obviously not not like this but you like crawl over the kelp forest now obviously if you have the option to just go around the kelp forest that is what you want to do but if there's a patch and you're just getting to a buoy or whatever and you want to just crawl over it it's actually quite easy to literally doggy crawl over the kelp you may still get kelp stuck in your fins or whatever and if that does happen just remember to stay calm stop moving and get your buddy to help sometimes it's easy just to flick it off yourself but the last thing you want to do is start flailing around and get more entangled. That one is super easy. I don't think you'll have any trouble with it. The nice thing about kelp is that if you just break it, you can get out of it very easily. So you don't typically need a cutting device for it. And kelp grows so fast that it's not 
necessarily a bad thing for the environment. It's not like coral where if we touch and break the coral, it takes years and years and years to grow back. Some species of kelp can grow insanely fast, so it's okay to free yourself that way. Skill number two is commonly known around these parts as the monastery crawl. And again, we're crawling. You see, see what I was talking about. This probably has different names in different parts of the country and the world, but in California, the monastery crawl is very well known because of one particular dive site. This dive site is Monastery Beach, and that's near Monterey, California, actually closer to Carmel, right? Carmel? I think so. I'm the worst van lifer. Like, my geography is horrific. I'll be in a place for a week. I'll know where all the water sources are and the bathrooms and all those things. <laughs> but, like, names of stuff, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm really, really bad. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> So as I said in the beginning of the video, I want to give a big shout out to EcoRoots, our sponsor for today's video. I have been obsessed with their products for well over a year now. Their products are so high quality and especially now living in the van, I don't want any chemicals in this space. All of their products are natural. Their new stuff like the dry shampoo, the cream deodorant, and the rosehip face cream. I absolutely love them. They smell great. And I just love supporting a small company here in the US. I gotta say, I was a little skeptical on the dry shampoo because dry shampoos just aren't, they haven't always been my favorite. This one is so great. It's light. It smells awesome. And it's super helpful for the days when I just can't take a shower because van life. I really do shower often though. That's something that I'm not a big fan of in the van life community. Like I shower regularly, but on the off chance that I need to look presentable, <laughs> because I spend a lot of time by myself, but on the off chance that I need to look presentable and uh, I haven't had a shower, it just like, it makes my hair feel so nice. And I think it looks pretty good too, although I'm in desperate need of a haircut. I have like crazy mermaid hair. I mean, I always do, but it's like on another level right now. I really love their stuff. I think you will too. So check out the link in my description below and use the code Asul Unlimited for a discount at checkout. It's a really easy way to support eco-friendly products and the content that I make on this channel. <laughs> this dive site is actually very, very dangerous depending on the conditions. A handful of fairly high profile deaths have happened at Monastery Beach and it's actually gotten the nickname Mortuary Beach. So that's what we're dealing with here. The reason why this particular dive site is so dangerous is because the shore there is steep. And so what ends up happening is the waves form and crash right in the spot where you're getting into and out of the water. So what ends up happening, if the waves are big, they create this sort of washing machine and you can get stuck. So on really bad days, which I didn't, I'm kicking myself now because I was actually there on a really, really gross day, but I didn't go out into the wind to get footage, mostly because there was a, lifeguard who was, I felt so bad for this guy. <laughs> he was just yelling at everyone to stay away from the water because it was that dangerous. I should have gone out and at least gotten, you know, a far away shot for you guys to see, but just imagine like washing machine waves. So when that happens and you're trying to get out of the water in full scuba gear, you can't do a normal exit of taking off your fins and walking out of the water because you're literally just being pummeled by waves over and over again. Those of you who have experienced large waves while scuba diving, or if you're a surfer, you know what it feels like to just be pummeled like over and over by waves. It's scary. So the monastery crawl was developed or somebody just figured out that this was the way to do it in order to get out of those tricky conditions. Best case scenario, you have some time to sit back and watch the sets because waves come in sets. And so you can kind of see what the pattern is and try to time your exit in between sets. And of course, mother nature 
<laughs> you could time it and try and be just perfect with it, but maybe you take a little bit longer to get out than you anticipate and you're still in the middle of a set. It happens. All you have to do is keep your mask on, keep your regulator in. This one you want to do with your regulator. And that's because you're dealing with waves coming up over your head. And so if you have your snorkel in, you're just going to be taken in water. You turn over and you swim on your stomach with your face down in the water. As you come up to the shore, the ground and the, the sand, then you can use your hands as well. And you'll be on your hands and knees and you literally just crawl out onto the beach. And as you can see here, we, we took it a little bit to the extreme and crawled like way up the beach. That's not <laughs> necessary, but you know, I told, I told the guys that we were going for a uh, dramatic effect. <laughs> And they just, they went for it. As you can see in the video here, we didn't have crazy waves that day. It was actually spectacular conditions. The visibility was just chef's kiss. It was so good. But with larger waves, you want to edge on the side of caution and really evaluate if you are prepared to make not only the entry, but the exit. That's something that I talk about in my shore diving video. I believe I talk about it. Um, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure. If you want to see that video, I've linked it down below in the description. And I've also linked my compass navigation video because that's also super helpful for diving in these kinds of conditions, actually being able to guide yourself to where you want to go and how to navigate yourself back out to your exit point. As always, I'm sharing these tips because I've personally made mistakes in all of these areas. <laughs> And I just want to save you a little bit of headache and hopefully make you a safer diver. All right, that's about it for me. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a big old thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Here, wait, let me see if I can. Hey! <laughs> I'd be used to this by now.